Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you've been around long enough you'll already know the drill. Whenever Ghost 9 have a comeback I make a separate review video because they are my alts. Before we begin I just have one thing to say. Why does this slap so hard? I'm being serious. I feel like I've been bitch slapped across the Atlantic but I'm ever so thankful for it. Not gonna lie. Going into this new era I kind of felt exhausted cause control literally only happened a bit over 4 months ago. They've just been on an American tour and have been releasing content like crazy. But once I heard snippets of the song in the new album I was so hyped and curious for this new era. To give you an idea of how hyped I was. I had to rewatch the music video 5 times before I could actually concentrate on what I was watching cause I was too busy head banging and throwing it back to this box. Soul was my favorite era of theirs for many reasons but X-Ray came and walked past me like that girl in the red shirt. And I can't keep my eyes off of her. X-Ray has got everything I love about this concept but does it even better. This is hands down their best comeback to date and I'll be fuming if it doesn't get the proper promotions that it deserves and more cause I really think that this song has the potential to be a turning point for them. It's addictive. It's hype. It shows off their skills. And I feel like it would appeal to so many people. When the song began, I was a bit iffy because I've heard so many songs begin with a start like that. I was worried that it was actually going to sound generic and basic, but then I remembered that this is Ghost 9. That chorus just hits different. And even before that when Jun Hyung came in for the pre-chorus it felt like he was breathing life into this song. And the chants at the end my god it felt like an anthem. I like how they don't immediately go into the final chorus after the bridge and instead there's this beautiful transition period that slows it down and lets the song breathe with Jun Hyung's falsetto overlaid with Kang Sung's faint rap. And then we get the O3 line doing an everybody by shiny and yeeting Jun Siang into the air. At this point if you're not a stan I don't know what more you could possibly need. Based on the mood film I initially thought, and people were mentioning it in the comment section as well, that they were going to do a vampire concept which I was really stoked for cost given taken is easily one of my favorite k-pop songs of all time and I love spooky concepts. But then as more teasers came out I got the feeling that it was more of a Jekyll and Hyde concept alo exo obsession and perhaps at ease say my name. But then there was just something about the synths and the beat in the second MV teaser that reminded me of Swedish House Mafia's Greyhound. So then I was expecting something like Think of Dawn or Wall but with more of like a dessert rave kind of sound. I'm actually glad I was wrong because like I said before, this slaps. I'm glad that it's dynamic and multifaceted cause it leaves you at the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen next. And that's what I love about Ghost 9's music. Control is another great example of this and I think they were able to recapture the same magic and power going into this. X-Ray is an amazing continuation of Control. It's still within the realm of the dark and edgy boy group sound but because of Ghost 9's consistency in quality and their extra flavor it also feels original. I've likened Ghost 9 to Monster X before but I really mean it. Monster X's discography has always been trendy. It's your classic powerful dark boy group sound but there's also always been that signature Monster X flavor that made their songs more special and stand out. I don't know how else to explain it but really I gotta give props to their music producers paper maker cause they've only delivered us the very best music since day one. Also we gotta give credit to their company. Miru may be a small company but the effort that goes into making these high quality comebacks and music videos for a group with a small fanbase always amazes me. It just goes to show that Miru really trusts these guys and can see their huge potential. Now onto the members. Jesus Christ the director knew exactly what they were doing putting Shin front and center looking like a hot mafia boss at the beginning. I only wish that he got more lines cause I love his voice but I'm glad they let his other talents shine. As for the other members, yes we got rapper Prince, Woojin got lines after being robbed in control, and we finally got to see Kang Sung in a mullet. Speaking of Kang Sung, I wish that he got a proper hardcore rap verse. I feel like it would have been a great addition to the song given its energy and I'd imagine that it would slide in between Prince and Woojin's parts in the second verse. I'm glad Jun Siang stuck with the platinum blonde hair for this comeback cause it's iconic and suits the concept so well. Jin Woo looks so grown up now. I feel like a proud mum whenever I see him. All of the members looked and did amazing and their confidence was through the roof in their comeback stage. But I think that this is Jun Hyung's era. 
His vocals were insane and I love how they highlighted his dance skills a lot in the music video. If only K-pop stands new Ghost 9, they'd go wild over Jun Hyung. Now onto the track list. Dot. Y'all already know that if a group has intro tracks that their music is legit. I feel this didn't fully live up to its potential. It's still a good preface to the album and I like the sample they use, but it gets overshadowed by Ghost 9's other interests like Peace Trigger and Milestone. Those are god tier. Champion. I've recently been on a 90s music craze so I really like the subtle 90s hip hop elements sprinkled here and there. I also like the horns in the chorus. They give me a lot of rocky vibes. Definitely going to blast this when I find the motivation to go for a run or when I need to smash out an essay. Take you there. It's like One Direction mixed with some J-pop and subtle retro elements. If you like bright songs then this is for you. I'm torn cause there are some parts of it that I'm naturally indifferent to but other parts that I froth over. I'll let it play if it came up on my shuffle. Always always. Clever wordplay. You got me there. Another bright song so it's not really for me but since it's Ghost 9 I'd let it play through. Stranger. Yet another bright song. I think this easily could have been on the now. When we are in love album. Overall. It's not my favorite Ghost 9 album. Now where we are here still holds that title with an iron fist. But it still slaps from beginning to end. Not like I needed to tell you that though. Now on to my concerns. Enjoy the following graphs I made on Excel a few hours before X-Ray dropped when I should have been working on my uni assignment. Ghost 9 have been around for almost 19 months now and have churned out 6 mini albums. Just to put things in perspective, the only 4th gen boy groups that I can think of who have 6 or more Korean mini albums in their careers so far already are Atties, Stray Kids, Very Very, One Us and The Boys. I want to emphasize the word career, not as a brag but more of a concern because I don't think doing a mini album for every comeback and with quick turnarounds is a smart idea. If we also have a look at other boy groups that debuted in 2020, but if we exclude the groups that debuted under the big four because they have certain privileges that groups from smaller companies don't. Disclaimer I'm not dissing and high pen and treasure for being a part of the big four, I'm just stating a fact. And high pen are literally my joint ults with Ghost 9 and Luna. No other boy group that debuted in the same year has had the same number of comebacks releases as Ghost 9. Again this isn't a brag, it's a concern. Usually to keep up with quick comeback turnarounds. Companies prefer to release singles in between album releases and there are two advantages to it. One fans get hyped for a new comeback with a new concept and get to see their fave soon. And two at least it gives the group a little bit of rest since they don't have to prepare 5 to 7 new songs. I've been worrying about Ghost 9's comeback pattern for a while now but it's also a bit of a paradox cause I want them to get the rest that they need but the music they come out with slaps so hard. Regardless though I really hope after the promotional period for this comeback is over that they get a well deserved break. Speaking of promotions. This is another concern of mine which has also been brought up by one of my subscribers before. Arguably. Think of Dawn was their best promotional era. They got to go on so many popular variety shows and they got to shoot for Days magazine. I feel like only recently with Control they got proper promotions again especially when they were touring in America. It seems like Maru have realized that they can't only release good music they also have to promote them well to get the word out about their quality music. I really hope they go back onto Hello82 or Rolling. And just to put it out there and hope that it manifests itself but I hope one day they could do an interview with Eddie Avila. On a brighter note I just wanna talk about their growth. For a while their debut EP was their best selling album but recently there looks like there's been a growth in interest towards the group. But can I just point out one thing. I'm sorry but how is now where we are here their lowest selling album? Do I not have taste? Do I need to go see my doctor? And here are some more graphs to see that interest in Ghost 9 is growing and the fandom is slowly getting bigger and bigger. And now finally I'd like to end the video with a little update from me. Last time Ghost 9 had a comeback I said that I was in a rut and kind of depressed because of what happened a few months beforehand. I also said that Control had helped me get out of it but I somehow tripped and fell into it again. I listened to their songs up until the end of 2021. But something changed and I began to feel sad again whenever I listened to their songs at the beginning of the year. It's only been within the last week that I've started to crawl out of the hole and re-added some of my fave Ghost 9 songs to my everyday playlist. 
X-Ray has everything that I love and so much more. Especially cause I love anything with synths and a dark mysterious concept. Y'all can say that I'm over exaggerating but it's honestly like therapy for me and it makes me feel better. Also a few people commented on a previous video of mine about how it's okay that I haven't changed my bias even though the member isn't part of the group anymore. First off I just wanna say how wholesome and caring this fandom is. And second I think I've come to pick Jun Siang as my bias in the lineup. Just seeing his TikToks always makes me smile and laugh like crazy and they've really helped me feel better. Dong Jun's still my bias though but I feel like I should also have a bias that's in the current lineup. Alrighty then that's it for the video. Hope you guys had fun and enjoyed the comeback. Here's to the start of an amazing new era with a song that is easily a strong contender for song of the year in my books. Also what do you guys think about these longer and more in-depth reviews? I was thinking of maybe doing it for a few other groups that I like but it really depends on you guys. Until next time. Stay groovy. Stay safe. Keep smiling. Love y'all. Bye bye.